So to talk about other tools that you might use for prototyping, we've brought in Cody from Pix8. Other. So Cody, what is Pix8? Uh, Pix8 is a prototyping platform. Mm -hmm. um, definitely used for uh, more uh, intense animations or, or detailed animations, mm -hmm. uh, interactions also. But it's all done natively. So on the device that you're prototyping for, uh, you get the same effects on scroll views, on the animations. Uh, anything that you would normally see in an app, we can reproduce through Pix8. Perfect. That's wonderful. So it sounds like it's good at these sort of higher fidelity prototypes. It's good at these like micro interactions and getting things right when you're doing some small part of the app. Right. It definitely focuses on reproducing a real experience within the app as opposed to uh, maybe ones that are more, you know, like paper for instance or anything like that where it, mm -hmm. it, you don't get the full feeling of it. What you can do is uh, when you prototype through Pix8, you can uh, basically hand this over to someone, a developer, uh, someone maybe you're selling the app to, mm -hmm. and show them exactly how you expect it to work as the designer. So a tool like Pix8 would make it much easier to have the design consultation we'll be doing later on in the lesson. So Cody, why are micro-interactions important for a prototype? Micro-interactions are really important from the design aspect because you want to show exactly the animations, the movement of the different elements within the app mm -hmm. uh, to give everyone a better idea of what you're trying to build and what you kind of envision as the designer. So what kind of questions do you get from entrepreneurs about your product? A lot of questions we get are related to um, what to do with it once you've created a prototype. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like that may be kind of a pain point for some people because here they have this design and they can show it to whomever. However, they get to hand this over to a developer now and show them exactly the animations they're looking for. And the developer, for the most part, can, can translate that over to code and then generate the app from there. Okay. So once you've built a prototype, you get a lot of questions about what to do with it, and your suggestions are pretty much have it built. Mm -hmm. That's okay. correct, yeah. Just build it, just hand it over to the developer and build from there. We want to work on, obviously, a lot of ways to improve that process, like giving in uh, code export or, mm -hmm. or um, you know, other features like that, which we're kind of you know, working on alongside other features. But uh, ultimately, right now, the best way to do it is to just show them. Okay, perfect. So we've covered what you do once you've gotten the Pix8 prototype. What is the process for getting into the Pix8 prototype? You know, let's say we've got people who have an Envision prototype or have a set of screens that have already been made. What do they do to get that into Pix8? Uh, ideally, the best way to do it is, is, is so the way that Pix8 works is it works solely with assets. Mm -hmm. Assets being images or soon actually video mm -hmm. and things like that. Uh, what they want to do is take that information or that those images they have through Envision, those screens, and transfer them into Sketch, Photoshop, anything like that. And then from that point, they can put it into Pix8, create them as individual layers, and start playing around with creating those interactions. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for coming in, Cody. Oh, not a problem at all. Thank you.